Hello again. So today we're going to be doing another test. This time I got a brand new roof rack, the slim looking roof rack from Tesla. And I just want to see what the difference is with it on and off. Not just in terms of aerodynamics, so efficiency. Obviously that's one of the most important things, but also sound. Uh, I haven't really seen a video that clearly states the difference in decibels when going at higher speeds because that's what I wanted to do, go uh, highways only. There's a couple videos on YouTube, but they don't actually do highway speeds, they do B-road speeds. And I wanted to see exactly what the difference is, since obviously uh, with aerodynamics, the faster you go, the more effect it will have both on sound and on aero. And this would be a perfect example. So I'm gonna do two runs, highway only. I think it's about 40, 50 kilometers away. I'll put the number on the screen, just I'm not exactly sure. Um, and see exactly what the difference is. I'm also, also gonna do a little graph or a comparison uh, before and after with the decibel meter so you can clearly see what the difference is gonna be in terms of sound uh, at 50, it, it up speeds of upwards to 50 kilometers per hour all the way up to 130. On the highway, we're gonna be doing 130 because that's kind of a like, worst case scenario, if you will, uh, which is pretty fast. It will count uh, for you people in the US as well. So yeah, let's uh, hop right into it and put the roof bars on top. Uh, actually, first, dry, first run is going to be dry and the second run is going to be with the uh, roof, roof bars on top. And uh, I'm curious to see what the results are going to be. Let's have a ride. Let's go. So we got our destination. Now turn right onto Strada of And as you can see from here all the way up to here, it's just highway. It's just highway. So probably 90, 95% of the, road, uh, the way it's going to be only highway. 120 and 130. So I just reset the trip meter and we have 39 kilometers left. So it's gonna be there and back. leaving the little restaurant and I'm on my way back another 57 kilometers to go and we'll have our results okay so we are back let's have a look at how things have gone so we're looking at trip a that's 98 kilometers there and back and we used up 17 kilowatts so that's 17.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer so that's not bad let's see how it compares with the roof bars on it's kind of a shame you can't have the animation uh, reflect the roof bars but oh well anyway let's put them on all right roof bars are on this is what it looks like with them on it looks pretty cool pretty sleek it took about five five minutes to put them on a bit of a pain but just i guess nerve-wracking so if you want to compare it side by side with one that doesn't have any roof racks. I don't know, I just prefer the way this looks. It makes it look more like a, an SUV. Um, so I plan on keeping them on as much as I can, except for maybe very long road trips. But yeah, that's what it looks like. The installation process is quite simple. Nerve wracking, yes, but simple. There we go. So we're going to reset trip A and go for another drive, see what we get. I am very curious about the results. Super, super curious, actually. So. Ninety. One 
100. One ten. One twenty. And one thirty. Stop number two is over. We're gonna hop in the car and go back home. Here we are, home sweet home. Let's see what we got. Moment of truth. So, that's a little impressive so 99 kilometers 17 kilowatt hours used just like before and then 17.4 watt hours per kilometer uh what sorry 174 watt hours per kilometer 17.4 watt hours per 100 kilometer uh that's basically the same that is like less than one percent that's incredible that is very impressive very very impressive similar to other i guess comparisons or videos that i've seen online but i definitely was expecting a bit more of a difference considering that it, you know we went, we did this test at a higher speed wow that's very impressive so we've reached the end of our test interesting results interesting results um, basically 0.1 of a watt hour difference if you go at about 130 kilometers per hour highway speed so this is like pretty uh pretty quick i think the average speed on highways is more like 120 but nevertheless i want to see like in a worst case scenario if you will uh, yeah very impressive very impressive i really was expecting a little bit more than that i mean i'm happy i'm happy because i'm planning i'm planning on leaving them on all the time i like the way it looks it looks more suv-ish if you will but yeah, that's, that's very good. So I guess range-wise, you don't have to worry about a thing. So if you want to install the roof bars, go ahead. Range isn't going to be impacted much or at all. I would say probably if you were to drain the battery from zero to one, sorry, from 100 to zero, you'll probably see a 1% difference, if that. So that's not much of a concern. Sound-wise, yes, there is a difference. I've noticed that above 100 kilometers per hour is where you start to feel, so that's like 60 miles per hour. That's where you start to hear more noise. But anything below that, and you, you can't tell. Unless you measure it with some specialized tools, you wouldn't be able to tell. Uh, it's, it's nearly identical. It is identical. But over 100 is when you start to hear a bit more wind noise. At 130, definitely more wind noise. It's not the end of the world though. It is, it's still manageable. You can still have a conversation. You can still listen to music and all that. So it doesn't bother you too much. Not like other roof racks. I've had roof racks on like uh, previous vehicles that I've had, uh, Mercedes, like Thule, you know, the, the aerodynamic ones, but they're like five times thicker than these. So overall, these are as efficient or as thin as you can get. There's no whistling of any kind. So there's no whistling noise at any speed that I've noticed. Overall, I would say they're a good investment. So if you want to get the roof bars, get them perfectly fine. Wouldn't impact the range. And sound wise, I would say from day, for day to day driving, it wouldn't make much of a difference unless you're constantly on the highways, uh, in which case it's up to you. But overall, interesting test, very interesting results. I did not expect, I was expecting like a good, I don't know, 5% difference because at 130, you know, the faster you go, the more wind resistance you're going to get. So I was really expecting to see a, a, a much bigger gap in terms of um, efficiency. And everything was as equal as it gets. Temperature was actually surprisingly about the same when we started and when we ended because this whole thing took about four hours. Um, I timed everything so it's 
so it took the, the same amount of time, like even our little stops when we got to our destination. It was five minutes in and out both times. Uh, so it, it, it's about as equal as it gets. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. I'm hoping this helped someone uh, make a decision or at least it's, it's more informative to see if it's a good idea to get the roof bars or not. So it looks like my brother's leaving somewhere, but uh, we'll, we have more videos coming uh, up with side-by-side -side comparisons for supercharging and ranges. So those, those are actually quite interesting. Very interesting results for those as well. Yeah, well, have a good one and thanks for joining me today. Bye.